All right. Hello. Welcome back, everybody. It's Jill, your English coach. We've got class four today of our advanced grammar two course. Um, we'll be wrapping this up. We've got another class scheduled for tomorrow, June 9th. Um, and if you are just joining us for the first time, welcome. I'm so happy that you are here. Um, if you have been here, welcome back. If you've missed any classes, please go back in the calendar and watch them. And let's get started. Today, we, uh, we've we been talking a, a lot um, using the perfect tenses and the perfect progressive tenses. So today, we're going to kind of pull more of that in, kind of try it from a different angle, because that's what teaching and learning is all about. We just kind of keep trying new things until... Hopefully something works and hopefully this works. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got, we're gonna review. We've got some stuff here to look at and we're gonna do a couple of exercises here over at the desk. So let's jump in. So we've got five different tenses here, you guys, five of them. So what we have here is we've got a series or a collection, I guess, of different tenses that we use in different situations or different scenarios. Okay, so let's kind of, if, you, if you're if you already familiar with all of these, don't worry, this will be a good refresher. And if it looks like a lot because this is new to you, don't worry, we're gonna take it slow and we will um, we'll go one by one. Um, also, if the, so this class is really good for advanced learners, like the students that are in the C1 and C2 levels. Um, if you are also, uh, it would also be good for B2. So if you don't know, you know, your, um, what your level is, you know, on the, the CEFR, you guys go ahead and, um, you can take some free class or some free, um, tests online. If you want to know the ones that I like, the ones that are free, just message me in the app and I'll send you the link. Okay. It's always a really it's always a really good idea to understand where you're at. Um, and I would say probably the most important thing to determine what your needs are, right? So I always use this example, and the example is if you are um, lost let's say, and you're using your phone or you're using a paper map, nobody uses paper maps anymore, but let's say you're using your phone um, to find directions to the grocery store. Maybe you're in a city that you are not familiar with. Um, what is the first step? So first, of course, you take your phone out and you click your app for your maps. But the next step is number one, find out where you are, right? You cannot know how to get where we're going if you don't know where you are. So in your map, you're gonna always click that little button that says your location, right? And the same is true when we're talking about any skill set that you are learning. Maybe you want to learn how to fix cars or maybe you want to run a marathon. Ultimately, you don't know until you start training how much work you have to do. So for example, let's use the marathon example. Um, if you, uh, you know, a, a, a marathon is 26.2 miles um, in the United States, we use miles. I know it's annoying, but we do. <laughs> I don't know how many kilometers that is, but anyways, um, you know, let's say you want to start training to run 26 miles and let's say you have three months to do it. So you, what, what would you do to plan for the training? You would take a calendar, right? You would say, here's my goal. And here are all of the days that I have until I reach that goal. And then kind of work backwards to establish a plan. Each day, I'm going to run one mile and then two miles and then two and a half miles and then three miles. And then this day, I'm going to run five miles and then I'm going to run. You know what I'm saying? So you would create a plan based on the goal and where you are, right? Without those two points, 
learning anything, training for anything is very, very difficult. Okay. So my suggestion to you would be to find your level. And, you know, another kind of really helpful tool for learning things is also to write down your goals. So I have, for example, a, you know, a notebook that I have goals in um, about my business, uh, about my fitness, about my health, about my uh, mental health, you know, any of those things that I'm, you know, I have goals in each of those areas, right? Um, but what I need to know first is always where am I, okay? So taking a test and finding out what your level is is really going to be helpful. And then actually with these classes, you can find out what are the areas that you need to work on more. You know, if you want to increase your vocabulary, then you can take our vocabulary, a vocabulary class. If you say, oh my gosh, my... You know, I've been studying English for a long time, but I just get so nervous when I speak English. Then come and, you know, take our pronunciation and fluency class or work in one on one classes with me privately. So that all of that is just to say that, you know, the process of learning and teaching is um, there's work for me to do. And there's work for you to do. And so making sure the only way that you are going to find success or improvement is by committing to yourself and to the process on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Um, and really, these classes are kind of a perfect opportunity for that because they are short and quick and filled with a lot of information, okay? All right, that's enough of Jill being the teacher. <laughs> my 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 coaching strategies um there but okay let's take a look at these five tenses so we have simple past here we've got three examples then we have present perfect present perfect progressive right here so the progressive or continuous tenses always have the ing form okay and the reason that we're doing all of these kind of together is because in many cases, A, they can be confused with each other very often. And um, the, 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 the usage of them is similar. And so it's worth comparing them, you know, to really try to understand when to use simple past, when we use present perfect, and when to use the present perfect progressive tense, okay? So, and then we've got these two others that are past perfect, okay, past perfect, and present perfect, excuse me, past perfect progressive, okay? So we've got past, just simple past, happened once, and it's done, right? Happened once, you're talking about a specific point in time, and it's done, okay? Present perfect is also done. It happened in the past and it happened for a period of time, okay? And then we've got present perfect progressive, which means it's not done, okay? So let's just kind of look at these and see if you guys can pick up on or kind of understand the nuances, the small differences between these tenses. So we've got, here are our examples. So in each, with each tense, I have an affirmative, a negative, and a question, okay? So, we bought a house, that's past tense. We didn't buy a house. Did you buy a house, okay? Affirmative, negative, and a question, okay? In the present perfect tense, so this is referencing something that started in the past and ended in the past, okay? We have built a house. We've built a house, okay? We started it, we finished it, it's done, okay? We have built a house. We haven't built a house, so just the negative form of that sentence. Have you built a house, okay? And then the present perfect progressive tense, we have been building a house. So this means 
this one means you guys that we have been building a house so it's in the past this is now okay this is now something started in the past we started building and we're still building it it's not done okay we have been building a house normally with a sentence like this you might say we have been building a house for two months okay or since March, okay, for, oops, for, let's do for two months, or you could say since March, okay? We talked about for and since in our previous class. So if that's something that is somewhat confusing to you, if you want to add time, a time clause into these sentences, go ahead and watch um, our last class and the class before that, okay? Um, okay, so we have been building a house for two months and this tense means it is not done, okay? We are still building a house now. Okay, we haven't been building a house. So somebody made a mistake and told this person, I've been building a house, but we haven't been building a house, okay? Ha and then the question, have, have you been building a house? Okay. Great, all right, past perfect. So something that, let's see, past perfect. We had bought a house. So you might be talking about something here in the past. Let's say, um, let's say if I, if I say something like in 2020, we had just bought a house. Maybe it happened just before it. So let's say this is 2020 and I'm saying, let's see. If I'm, if I'm here, this is me talking now, this is now, okay? And I'm talking about this point in time, maybe, uh, maybe I'm talking about when I bought a car. So we bought a car here and we had just bought a house. So maybe you're saying, last year we bought a car and when I went into the bank, the bank didn't want to loan me the money because we had bought a house one year before that. I don't know. So I'm just kind of creating a scenario so that you can kind of understand. So a person says to themselves, I want to buy a car. And they go to the bank and the bank says, no, this isn't a good idea because you just bought a house. So if I'm talking about that scenario now in the past, right, I'm talking about it now, but it's a in a, a situation when I went to the bank that happened in the past, okay? And I'm referencing two points in time in the past, okay? I'm making it sound very confusing, but when we do some uh, reviewing and kind of going over it together, you're gonna see what I'm talking about, okay? Um, Great. So we had bought a house, we hadn't bought a house. Had you bought a house, okay? And then, this for this past perfect progressive, we had been buying a house and then something happened, right? With most progressive tenses, you're kind of talking about something that started and something that uh, continued and then something happened in the middle. So you could say we had been buying a house or we had been working to buy a house and the market crashed, okay? Um, so something was happening and then something happened in the middle, okay? Um, great, we hadn't been buying a house. Had you been buying a house? So this, to me, this scenario is kind of confusing. So um, don't worry about this too much. We're gonna look at this together. Okay, so let's come over here and then work on some stuff at the computer. We're gonna look here at simple past, present perfect or present perfect progressive. Okay, so it says complete the paragraphs about other people's interests. Use the correct form of the verb, verbs in the parentheses. Simple past, present perfect, or 
present perfect progressive. It's hard when there's three choices. So let's take some time and, and get this right for you guys. Sometimes more than one answer is correct. Okay, May has been taking photos ever since her parents bought. Is that just like a one-time thing, right? Okay, so buying something is usually just um, a one-time thing. So, um, so May has been taking photos ever since her parents bought her a camera when she was only ten. At first, she only took so this is all past color snapshots of friends and family but then she changed to black and white lately she lately she has been shooting now why is this saying this so shooting is what we say with the camera right we say you shoot we shoot photos um Lately, she has been shooting a lot of nature photographs. Now, the question I'm going to ask you is why are we using the present perfect progressive tense here? She has been shooting because it's something that started in the past and continues to the day today, and it's maybe not done. Okay, so it maybe continues into the future. Okay, so that's the um, present perfect progressive is kind of. It starts in the past, continues to today, and maybe goes into the future. I'm going to put a little question mark there because we're not sure, but probably. Okay. This year, she competed in three amateur photography contests, and it's only April. In fact, last month she won, past tense, one thing, second prize for her nighttime photo of a lightning storm. All right. All right. So great. That one is done. So part B, Carlos began playing music when he got an electric guitar for his 12th birthday. He didn't stop, hasn't stopped playing since. This word right here is how I know it's present perfect and not just simple past, okay? He hasn't stopped playing since, okay? In fact, the guitar became more or has become has become yep has become the guitar has become so something started in the past and continues to today has become more than just a way of having some fun with friends last year he joined a local band so this part right here last year is kind of it, it is the way, reason i know that it's just simple past okay last year it started and it's just done since then they have performed or you could say have been performing um something that started in the past and continues to they have been performing all over town so far okay so you could say have performed or have been performing so far this year the band has given, so when they say so far, that means I'm talking about the past, but it's probably not done, okay? So far this year, the band has given six concerts and they have plans for many more. So that's perfect. This is actually telling you that there's probably more coming in the future, okay? Okay, and then the last paragraph here, Kate, found a beautiful old stamp last month. It is part of the fantastic collection she has worked on or has been working on, has been working on for the past two years. At first, she just saved stamps from letters that she 
got from friends. After some time, however, she began to look more actively for stamps. Lately, she has been buying. And this is the key for me here because it's something that's recent. So it's in the past, but it's not too far in the past and it will probably continue into the future, okay? She has been buying them from special stores and trading stamps with other collectors. So because you have has been buying here, you don't need to say has been trading. You can, but you don't need to, okay? So far, she has found over 200 stamps from all over the world. Okay. All right, you guys, there's that one. Great. Does that make sense? So in, in, in a lot of these situations, there, there is some choice that the speaker gets. It's not, it's not always extremely obvious, you know, what tends to use. So it kind it's a small little differences in, in the meaning of what you're trying to say. Okay. So don't get too caught up on it. Just practice the scenarios, the situations, and then and then use those things and practice those tenses. Okay. Um, let's see. I wanted to show you guys uh, another couple little exercises here. Just to kind of really solidify this. Um, so here's another little example from his book, The Fundamentals of English Grammar. It was raining out and now the sun is coming out. So there's a lot more light in this room. So the lighting might have gotten weird. Um, okay. So taking a look here, you guys, we've got the um, simple past versus present perfect. So this can kind of help you to answer some of those questions like, teacher, when do I know or how will I know if I'm, you know, if I'm supposed to use simple past or present perfect. So let's just go through some of these scenarios and try to clear up some of those questions for you, okay? Okay, simple past. For example, I finished my work two hours ago. Here it says I finished my work at a specific time in the past, two hours ago. So if you have specific time, simple past is perfect. Okay, and then um, this one, sometime before now, but it's not specific. So here, this is two hours ago. This is just, I finished my work. I I'm done with it. So I have already finished my work means I finished my work at an unspecified time in the past, sometime before now, but the time is not important for the sake of the conversation. Okay. <clears throat> I was in Europe last year, or I was in Europe three years ago. I was in Europe in 2006, in 2008, and 2010 when I was 10 years old. Okay, those are all just different examples. So here they're talking about an activity that occurred at a specific time in the past, as in A and C. The present perfect expresses an activity that occurred, happened, at an unspecified time or times in the past. So the example, I have finished my work, but it's not important when. It's just to say, I have finished my work. And then here, I have been in Europe many times. I've been in Europe several times. These are just, these slashes just kind of show that there are other examples here. I have been in Europe a couple of times. I have been in Europe once. Okay, but the time is unspecified. It's not specific. It doesn't quite matter. Okay. And then the last simple past and was in Miami for two weeks. So in sentences where for is used in a time expression, the simple past expresses an activity that began and ended in the past. Okay. In sentences with for and since, the present perfect expresses an activity that began in the past and continues to today. Okay. So Anne was in Miami for two weeks. Bob has been in Miami for two weeks or since May 1st. So for and since. But simple past. And it, this one means she's no longer in Miami. But here Bob is still in Miami. So he has been there for two weeks. 
and today is still there. Okay. Um, let's see, there's a lot of stuff that we are trying to cover today, and I don't know that we are going to get to all of it. But what I would like to do is have you guys take a look at this grammar exercise here. So what you're doing is that you're going to be answering the question. So the question here for number one, all of these verbs talk about past time, but the verb in A is different from the other three verbs. What's the difference? So this is going to be kind of tricky. So go ahead and take some time and read these. You can work on this with somebody else if you'd like. That I mean, that would be ideal. Go ahead and work on this, and then we will look at this again in our class again tomorrow. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Take your time on these um, tenses, and don't worry about it. We will get there. And the more that you practice, the more comfortable you're going to feel with all of these tenses. So you're doing a great job. I will see you here tomorrow. Bye.